right folks it's good to be with you today and hope everybody's okay <clears throat> if you'd like to turn to ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 <clears throat> Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we come before you today. And Father, we give you the glory and we trust in you that you are our God. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory. And Father, we confess all our sin and we acknowledge our guilt. We acknowledge how much we need you, Lord, how much we need your grace. And so, God, we confess all our sin today. And Father, we pray in your name, Lord, and for your glory, that you be pleased to bless now your word. So, Father, we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory, Lord, that you would bless us and you would encourage us, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Anoint this message to our hearts. Fill us afresh, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Speak to us, renew us, clean us, help us. And Father, above all, help us to see your love for us today in jesus name amen amen so if you like to turn to ephesians chapter 3 it says for this cause <clears throat> i paul the prisoner of jesus christ for you gentiles if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me towards how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in a few words. Whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all the saints, is the grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fe fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things, by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to strengthen with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And our text that we can take uh, as, a, as, a, as an anchor uh, to meditate is whereby verse 4 Ephesians 3 4 whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ in the mystery of Christ you can hear the noise in the background it's just uh, a bit of rain a bit of rain Okay, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3 <clears throat> is the Grand Canyon of the Bible. 
just as you go to the Grand Canyon and you step back and you see the amazing canyon and the vastness of it. So God wants you to step back and he wants you to see the vast love that he has for you. He wants you to see the greatness of what is happening in your life. He wants to he wants you to see some amazing things about who he is and what he's doing in the church. And you need to step back now and see the great work that God is doing. So in Ephesians 3, 4, we hear the words mystery of Christ. What is the word mystery? The Greek word mystery or mysterion is not the kind of mystery that we would understand in English. The idea we would understand is mystery is a negative thing, kind of mysterious, dark. No. Mysterion, the Greek word mystery, mysterion, is a truth hidden from human knowledge or understanding, but disclosed by the revelation of God. And God, throughout the ages, has had a mystery that he has revealed to mankind, and that is this, that the Jews and the Gentiles will be one people. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 let's turn to Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 and that is what Ephesians 3 is all about it's all about that God is saved is, is saving the people of the Jews and the Gentiles together Galatians 3 28 Galatians 3 28 <clears throat> Sorry about this. Galatians 3.28. <clears throat> there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. There is neither now Jew. There is neither now Gentile. We are all one in Christ. And then if you turn to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11 verse 1 to 18. Acts chapter 11. <clears throat> verse 1 to 18 if you got a Bible get your Bible out and let's get into the Word of God and check what I'm saying whether it's biblical or not you should always be checking if the Bible if what the preacher saying biblical <clears throat> let's look at this Acts chapter 1 verse 1 to 18 <clears throat> notice Peter's finding it hard to believe that God is going to work in the Gentiles because he's a Jew. <clears throat> and the apostle and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles would also receive the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with them, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. So the Jews are complaining, those who came to know the Lord who were Jewish, are complaining that Peter and others are proclaiming the gospel to the Gentiles. Verse 4, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expanded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in the trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended, and it had been a great sh sheep let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me, upon which I had fastened my eyes. I considered and saw and four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, No, not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me and again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times. All were drawn up again unto heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come to the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me, go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. <clears throat> he shall tell these words, where thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on the beginning. Then I remembered a word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. 
for as much then as God gave them the light the gift like gift as he also unto us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ what was I that I could withstand God when they heard these things they held their peace and glorified God saying then hath God also also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life that whole incident God was teaching the church that he had come to save the Jews but he'd also come to save the Gentiles now you're wondering well what has that got to do with you in your life well because you need to see a bigger picture in your life you're not getting the bigger picture it's kind of like imagine the Titanic collapse uh, sinking and there is a lifeboat and you're on that lifeboat there are many other lifeboats with no people in and there are people drowning everywhere one of the stewards of the ship uh, a trainee captain is there and he's bothered or she's bothered about everybody in the water trying to save them but you're alone in your ship in your lifeboat and all you can do is think about yourself you're thinking about your problems about your needs while the assistant captain is worried about everybody all the lifeboats all the people in the water and that's what god is trying to teach you today that there are bigger things afoot in your life that you're part of a greater plan that you've been engrafted into the church there is neither jew nor gentile we are all one in christ and you've been engrafted into this great plan of god and it is god's plan that men and women and boys and girls be saved and you have been brought into this amazing plan of god so we have five points today number one the mystery of christ in the mystery of christ in the mystery of christ you have a ministry number two in the mystery of christ you have a message for all number three in the mystery of christ you have a uh, to maintain unity number four in the mystery of christ you have a purpose for your suffering and number five in the mystery of christ you have abundant provision abundant provision so number one the mystery of christ you have a ministry turn to ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 to 7. turn to after i've done the message after i've preached the message i'm going to invite people to come on and share some time with me so so stay around if you want to come on the show. We'll be 45 minutes in the Word, and you can come on and be with me. I'll send some of my friends um, to some of my friends on YouTube who, who I respect, and they can come on, and we can spend some time together. So hang around. I'll send it by Skype and personal invitation. Okay? Love you guys and girls, yeah? Okay, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. To seven we're looking at in the mystery of christ you have a ministry okay verse one for this cause i paul the prisoner of jesus christ for you gentiles if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me to ward to you word how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in a few words whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Verse 7, here's the verse. Wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Notice the Greek word minister means servant. It means literally serving at tables like a waiter. Every single one of us in the church is a minister. Every single one of us is a servant willing to serve for the Lord. Every single one of you have a ministry in the church. Now you, somebody might say, well, Jay, I haven't got a minister. I'm not the pastor. Wait a minute. The pastor is 
part of the gifting of the church but there are other gifts as well that are people in the church that have other talents and other gifts my friend and you have a gift you have a talent to work for the lord in the church the Bible does not teach a one-man band. The Bible does not teach a one-man ministry. That is unbiblical. The Bible teaches we are a body, and if a body, then all of us have gifts and talents to use within the church. And too often the church is suppressing those people who were there to, that by God to serve the living God. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers he gave a variety of gifts there are pastors there are evangelists there are prophets there are all sorts of people with various gifts within the church of the living God 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Now, I'm not going to get into have the gifts cease or not and all the rest of it. When it's in the word, it's in the word. And when it's there in the word, I accept it in the word. And when it's not in the word, I don't accept it. And I'm not going to explain it to you. It's there in the word, so you should be able to understand it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. It says, and God has set some in the church first to be apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps and governments, diversities of tongues, my friend. God has given gifts to the church. God wants each individual in the church to be a minister, a servant of the Lord, not a one-man ministry. Not a one-man ministry where we look up to one man and idolize a man as if all the answers is one man. No, the answer's not in one man. The answer's in God and the blessings that God pours upon his church and those who are in the church, every single one has a gift. Every single one has a gift, even the weakest member of that church. Their gift is the most important gift. The weakest member is the most important gift at all. How we let God down here, how we fail God, how we judge people in the church, because maybe they're not as anointed. Maybe they're not as gifted as you in a certain area, but they might be weak. They might be frail. They might not got it all together. But according to God, God uses these people mightily for his glory. And you should be humble before them. To realize that God will use these people even more than using you. You cannot advance greater than your weakest member in your church. They are blessed of God. They bring blessings to God. And so often the weakest members of our churches are left on the sidelines. They are not encouraged. They are not valued. They are not respected. They are not used. And it is wrong, my friend. God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the mighty so remember that so number one the mystery of christ you have a ministry number two the mystery of christ you have a message for all a message for all ephesians 3 verse 8 ephesians 3 verse 8 my friend ephesians 3 verse 8 Ephesians 3, verse 8 and verse 9. Unto me am less than the least of all the saints. In this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, to make all men see what is the fellowship and mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. All men are to have the gospel. So many today in churches have their agendas and their ideas of church growth. You read many books today and the books will say, concentrate on the young people, concentrate on families. No, no, no. You concentrate upon all, all men and women are to have the gospel. Whether they be black, whether they be white, whether they be upper class, middle class or working class, whether they be 20, 30, 40, 90 years of age, 
whether they be 12, 4, or 3 years of age, we proclaim the gospel to all people, all races, all sexes, my friend. How many times have you put up a barrier? How many times have you judged someone? Maybe there is a, a drug addict. Maybe there is a prostitute. Maybe there is a homeless person and you've judged them. I heard of a church not so long ago that took a homeless person, came in to the church, a homeless person, and that church said they were, I, I can't remember the exact word, but it was something like they were, they were flabbergasted. They couldn't believe it. They were offended that a homeless person would come to their church. What kind of a church is that? That is not church. That is religion. Uh, the living God's church welcomes all men and women and boys and girls to come in. We welcome all, all races, all people. We cry out to them and say, come and trust in the Lord. We put no barriers up against the people who God wants to reach, my friend. We don't just reach the young people. We don't re just reach the old people. We reach all people. And we make them all feel welcome in the church. In Mark chapter 16, 15, let's turn to that. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark 16, 15. Come on, get your Bible out. I said, get your Bible out. Let's study the word of God. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. What? To every creature. We proclaim the gospel to everybody. There are churches today that are not preaching the gospel. You cannot be a gospel church if you're not preaching the gospel. You cannot be a minister and not be preaching the gospel. You cannot be a church and not be preaching the gospel. There is no option here. You cannot say we're not going to reach the young people on our estate because they're too rowdy. The, the Lord says, go preach the gospel to every creature. You cannot say, oh, we're not going to reach the children. It's going to be too difficult. No, to every creature. Everybody has to hear the gospel. Everybody has to hear the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves all people and would have all men repent and believe in him. And we have to go to all. Let's turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Come on now, get your Bible out. Romans 1, 16. Romans 1, 16. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul was a man of the gospel for all. He not only preached to the Jews, he also preached to the Gentiles. He preached to the pagans. He preached to the unbelievers. He preached to the philosophers. He preached to the religious. He preached to all types of men and women. And you have to do the same. Do not put any barriers up in your church. You must have to preach a free gospel to all men and women. And there is no exclusiveness in the preaching of the gospel. It is wide open. Come, drug addict. Come, prostitute. Come, middle class. Come, bank manager. Come, rich. Come, poor. Come, black. Come, white. Come and believe in Christ. He died for you. He gave his life for you. So come. Come and believe in him. Come and trust in him. The gospel is for all men and may it always be that way then if you turn to uh, ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 and 10 we're looking in our third point the mystery of christ you have to maintain unity in the mystery of christ you have to maintain unity revelation chapter 3 verse 8 to 10 revelation ch sorry ephesians chapter 3 ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 and 10. Unto me, who am less than the least of all the saints, is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which, whom the, from, which 
from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God what is the manifold wisdom of God well if you read Ephesians chapter 3 I've already told you the manifold wisdom of God is that he's bringing Jew and Gentile together he's bringing one people one people and here's the point all the people that God is bringing all the people that God is making a church the angels the principalities if you don't believe me look at three Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God the angels are looking down at the church and the angels are learning about God by looking at the church when the angels and the demons see the church be the church united in Christ and doing what the what the church is called to do even the angels and demons are learning about God and his plan through looking at the church my friend unity in the church is vital it declares the glory of God the angels and demons are looking on and amazed at what God is doing when he sees the people of God united and so we cannot be disunited no I'm not calling for compromise if a minister says that he does not believe in the Bible and if some of the people in the church say that they don't believe in the Bible that they say that the Bible has got faults in it then you have a right to split that church you have a right to cause disunity and say we are leaving you we are not having any of this we do not want you we're not having this message we're not having this minister we're not having these people we want people who believe the word of God in its entirety as fully inspired and you have a right to cause division if a minister or a church say that it's okay to be gay you have a right as a preacher you have a right as a church to split from that church and say no it is not biblical I will not have it I am standing on the word of God and if it causes a split in the church you have a right to do that because it is a fundamental belief and fundamental beliefs have to be stood for defeat Galatians chapter 1 it says cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel you have a right to stand up for biblical truth and if it causes a split in the church then so be it but you do not have a right to cause a split in the church over nothing when a man or a woman or a people are arguing in the church and arguing about the curtains one group says the church should have curtains that are red and other people in the church say we ha should have curtains that are yellow and everybody's arguing and nobody's getting on and the church splits you do not have a right to do that you do not have a right to split the church because of that or maybe someone in the ministry has got in your place and taken over your job and you're upset you don't have a right to split the church over that that's not fundamental there are fundamentals that you can stand up for but then there are things that you must unite on and not split the church on and so often people do not see that unity is vital within the kingdom of God it is foundational in the kingdom of God and so often many Christians are grumpy and backbiting and moaning and causing division needless division within the church of God and God hates it he hates disunity let us turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 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 now I beseech you brethren by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you speak the same thing and that there be no say that there be no what divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment you need to be united sister you need to be united brother you're causing division for some reason I don't know and you need to stop it you need to stop causing division if it's not if it's not a fundamental issue do not cause division Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 it says and he gave some apostles some prophets 
some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. What? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Why are all these gifts there? Verse 13. Till we come. Here it is. In the unity of the faith. Did you catch that? God wants us to be united. In the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God wants us to be united, my friend. Colossians 3.13. Let's turn to Colossians 3.13. Colossians 3.13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even Christ forgave you, so also do you. If you've got a quarrel with a fellow brother and sister in Christ, then you need to forgive and you need to forget. You need to forgive and you need to forget. Oh, I know you're bitter. I know you're angry. I know you're feeling down about that person, but you forgive them and you forget. Okay. John 17, 23. John 17, 23. Come on. Get your Bible out. John 17, 23. John 17, 23. I in them and thou in me that they may be made what? Perfect in one. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them and as thou hast loved me. That Christ's prayer is that his people be united. If you know of a person who knows the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, you have to be united with them. Psalm 133. Psalm 133, Psalm 133, go to Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell what? Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that run down upon the beard even aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments and the jew of hermon and the jew that descends upon the mountains of zion for there the lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore oh my friends god loves it when his people are united 1 peter chapter 3 verse 8 1 peter chapter 3 verse 8 oh you're a calvinist are you well why aren't you united with the arminian Oh, you're an Arminian, aren't you? Why aren't you united with the Calvinists? Oh, you're a Pentecostal, are you? Well, why aren't you united with those who are not Pentecostal, who are the Calvinists? Oh, and you're a Calvinist, are you? Well, why aren't you united with the Pentecostals? we got to be united in the gospel, my friends. We're at war. We're in a battle. And the people of God are divided. And when you're divided, you get conquered. you got to be united in God. you got to be united in the gospel. If a Pentecostal believes that that Christ died and rose again, if a Calvinist believes that Christ died and rose again, if an if an Arminian believes that Christ died and rose again, then we will stand together and we will be united and we will preach the gospel together, together, together. Yeah, we will preach together. Stop splitting and moaning and splitting the church. We got to be united. I'm not saying we compromise. I'm not saying we become all ecumenical. Oh no, I'm not saying we all become ecumenical. I'm not saying we all go down the road and we all join up with the Catholics who don't believe that Christ died and rose again and was saved by grace. Oh no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we go and join a whole group of churches who are Unitarian and don't believe that Christ is God in the flesh. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we compromise on truth. We don't unite with them. I'm talking about those who believe the gospel. I'm talking about those who believe Jesus Christ died and rose again and we're saved by grace. Whether you're Arminian, Calvinist or Pentecostal, we have to be united in the proclamation of the gospel. We are at war. We're at war. We're in the battle and we need to stand together as the forces of darkness are coming against the church and the devil in the roaring lion is coming against us and we need to be together we need to be together brethren we need to stand together we need to hold the lion together we need to fight together war together preach together proclaim the gospel together we need to stand together and how many times have we split how many times have we not been united and god hates it 
God hates it when we're not united. God's not going to be concerned whether you're a Calvinist or whether you're an Arminian in heaven. He's going to be concerned whether you were born again, whether you were saved by grace, whether you walked a holy life, whether you were filled by the Spirit of God, whether you use your gifts for Him. That's what He's going to be concerned about. Oh, my friend, be united. Be united in the gospel. Be united in the proclamation of the word. If you're a Calvinist pastor today and you don't believe in the gifts, get in touch with a Pentecostal pastor who believes in the gifts and work together for the gospel to proclaim it in your town, in your city, in your area. We got to stand together, my friend. Number four, the mystery of Christ. You have in the mystery of Christ. You have a purpose in the mystery of Christ. You have purpose in your suffering. In the mystery of Christ, you have purpose in your suffering. In the mystery of Christ, you have purpose in your suffering. Turn to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Here it is, verse 13. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory, your glory. I'll say it again. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. The word glory there has the idea of weightiness. It has the idea of a weighty gold. And there is the idea that one day you will die and you will be with your Lord and you will get the glory. You'll be in a glorified body. You'll know glory upon glory upon glory. And it'll be weighty as you know the living God in a way that you've never known him before. And it's kind of like this. Imagine a great big scrapyard with hundreds of cars in there, all scrap cars. And a millionaire buys the scrapyard. Now, two elderly people, two senior citizens living near the scrapyard, see the scrapyard and they took and they can't believe how horrible and dirty and, and, and smelly and horrible the cars are. They're all a wreck. Yeah. And the millionaire buys the scrapyard and he pays mechanics and people to get all the metal of the cars and make new cars and when he's finished the scrapyard's gone it's a brand spanking new showroom with new cars ferraris and rolls royce all on display all been made out of the scrap metal of the other cars yeah and that's what paul is getting at here turn to verse 13 again wherefore i desire that you faint not at my tribulation for you which is your glory. What Paul is saying here, look, my life seems a car wreck. It seems like it's a scrapyard. But don't worry because my suffering is working towards your glory. You see, one day, all the mess and all the pain and all the scrap in your life, God is going to turn it around in those last days when you're in glory. He's going to turn it all around and make you anew. And what that means is this, every pain, every tear that you have ever shed is being used, is being used by God and is not wasted for your glory. Every tragedy, every, every rejection, every feeling that you have gone through that where you have been hurt, every disappointment, everything that has hurt you, everything that has broken you, everything that has pulled you down, has been working towards your glory in heaven. So God had it out in hand all the time. He knew the pain that you was going to go through. He knew the suffering. And he was working it out for your glory. The glory that you're going to receive in heaven. The glory of God as it comes upon you. And changes you from glory unto glory unto glory. So when you're on your settee at night. And you're wondering. What happened to you? Why did it happen? And you're wondering about the pain that you've gone through and the pain that you're going through. He is working it out for your glory. 
everything is working out for your glory because you're not staying here forever you're going on to heaven my friend you're going on to glory and everything that is happening to you now even the pain is not an accident god knows what he's doing and he's preparing you for eternity he's preparing you for glory and you're going to be there forever and ever in joy in him and praising him and being with him honoring him fellowshipping with him oh it's going to be awesome when you're with god forever and ever in eternity and every pain that you're going through right now every pain that you've gone through it was all in the plan of god to bring you to have more glory if you want to read a psalm and you get chance read psalm 139 if you get chance read psalm 139 today and meditate on that let's turn to 2 corinthians chapter 1 verse 1 to 7. 2 corinthians chapter 1 2 corinthians chapter 1 1 to 7. paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god and timothy our brother unto the church of god which is in corinth with all the saints which are in ikea grace be to you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ blessed be god even the father of our lord jesus christ the father of mercies and the god of all comfort who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforting of god of god for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded by christ and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer or whether we be comforted it is for your consolation and salvation god is a god of all comfort and god will comfort you and he'll be with you and he'll surround you with his protection he'll surround you with his help you are not alone today everything you're going through today he's got it in hand and he'll protect you and he'll guide you and he'll encourage you and he will help you my friend every suffering that you have gone through and are going through god has a purpose for you he has a purpose for it he is using it for your glory so when you get to heaven you'll be the man you'll be the woman that god was molding and making for his glory and then ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21 the high watermark of the chapter the mystery of christ in the mystery of christ you have abundant provision the mystery of christ you have abundant provision in the mystery of christ you have abundant provision ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 21 let's go get your bible out let's go ephesians chapter 3 ephesians 3 14 21 for this cause i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of god now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end amen did you hear that may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breath length depth, depth and height and to know the love of christ that passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of god not with some of the fullness of god not with a little bit of the fullness of god but with all the fullness of god yeah my friend god wants you to realize that he loves you Turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You're blessed today, my friend. You're blessed today. And if you take time, have a look in your own time, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 and 27. Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 to 27. What God is trying to show you today is that God loves you so much. It's kind of like a telescope in the days of Aristotle and in the days of Plato and the Greek philosophers. They wouldn't have been able to see many stars. They, they saw a lot of stars. But when we had the telescope, the modern telescope that was developed in the 14th, 15th century, they were able to see tens of tens and tens of thousands of stars. And now, with the big telescopes, we can see billions of stars. But they can only see a little bit, and now we see a lot more. And that's what God is trying to do in this chapter. We only see a little bit of the love of God, and he wants to expand your horizons. He wants you to open up and see the vast array of the good of God for you the wonderful love of God for you God will supply all your need he will do more abundantly than you could ever ask or think he loves you especially those who are trying to proclaim the gospel especially the churches that are trying to proclaim the gospel you might feel that you haven't got the resources. You might feel a despised church, a small church. You might be in India. You might be in Africa. You might be in China. You might be in America, South America. I don't know. But you feel as a small church, you have not the resources to go forward. I want to tell you that God has the resources. God has it all in hand. And God will provide for his people. And he will provide for you as a church. you got to go to him and ask. It's rather like. A guy, uh, you, 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 you need some money. You need 100 pounds. And you go to this guy and you say, I need some money. And he writes a check for 20 pounds. But then you go to someone who loves you and has a lot of money. And you write to them and you talk to them. And you say, I'm, I'm in debt, 100 pounds. Can you help me? And they write a check of 200 pounds. I'm not preaching health and wealth here. What I'm trying to tell you is that God can do more abundantly than you could ever ask or think more abundantly than you could ever ask or think yeah more abundantly and so as a church if you have needs as a church you need to pay your pastor a salary you need to pay for the building you need to do the things that you need to do for the proclaiming of the gospel then as a church you can come to the mighty god and mighty god will provide all your needs as a church he loves his church and he will bless his church and he will provide for his church. And that goes for you, sister. That goes for you, brother. You are wondering how you can cope, how you can pay your bills, how you can go forward today and in the next few days and in the weeks ahead with your family. Or maybe you're a single mom and you're wondering how you can cope in the future. I'm telling you that God is a father God, that God knows your need. And God will provide if you go to him. Yeah. Especially if you're on message and you're proclaiming the gospel in your area. God will meet all your need. He is a great God. He is a loving God. And he's with you right now. So do not worry, my friend. Do not stress about the future. Oh, my friend, how many times have you been worried about money? How many times have you been worried about the future? You do not have to stress about the future. You do not have to stress about money. God will supply all your need if you put him first. If you put him first, he will be there for you. You put him first and he will provide for you. He'll provide for you. He'll provide for your family. He'll provide for your church. He will provide because we have a provider. We have a mighty God. We have a great God. And we have a loving God. And he will never, ever see his people going short of the resources that they need to do and get the job done yeah do you think do you remember the british army when they went into afghanistan they went into the helman province and the british army didn't send their troops in with the right equipment they didn't give them the proper armor jeeps that's not with our god when he sends your his people into battle when he sends them into the fight <laughs> 
He equips them and provides for his people because we have a mighty God. Yeah, we have a powerful God. We have a great God and we have a, a lovely God and we have an awesome God. And he is right here now with you and he'll provide for you. Yeah, so you stop worrying. You stop worrying about money. You stop worrying about the future because God is on your case and he's there with you and he's providing for you and he's going to help you and he's going to sustain you and he's going to be there with you every day. Oh, it's glorious, my friend. Do not, I repeat, do not be discouraged today because God is with you. Yeah, God is with you. Turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39 we're near the end romans chapter 8 verse 31 and 39 romans 8 31 39 <coughs> romans 8 31 and 39 Woo! romans 8 31 and 39 <coughs> let's see how much god loves you today let's see how much god loves you today romans 8 31 39 come on now look up away from your pain and look into what god has to say for you right now romans 8 31 39 for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels or principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god is in christ jesus our Lord, eh? Neither height nor depth, neither any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I just want to say something here now. I want to talk to that person, and you've been in pain. You've been in pain, you've been suffering emotional pain. And over the years, there has been this pain that has come and, 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 and it haunts you. And you know, down in your mind, at the back of your mind, it comes every now and again like a shadow to you. And it haunts you. And you don't want to look at it and you run away from it and you run away from it and you run away from it. And you keep running away by being busy. You're busy and busy and busy and you're running away from the pain. And then at night when you're resting, that shadow again comes in your mind and it comes and it haunts you and you try to suppress it and when it comes it crushes you and it gives you a sense of hopelessness you feel that there is no hope when this shadow comes and so the next day in the morning you're busy you're busy you're running and running and running and running away from the pain the pain that's deep, the pain that hurts you, the pain that nobody knows about. It's so deep, so intimate, and so debilitating, so hurtful, so dark. And you're running away from this pain, and you're hiding from the pain. And I want to tell you that God knows about this pain. God knows about it, and he's got it in hand. Put it in his hand. He's got it all in hand. He knows about it, and he's more than able to do abundantly than you could ever ask or think he is a good God and he loves you and he doesn't want you to carry this pain anymore. He doesn't want you to be on the run from this pain anymore. You don't have to keep busy all, all the time to hide from this pain. Oh, open your, open your heart to him right now and say, Lord, I'm, this pain's been deep inside me for so long and it's crippled me for so long and there seems no hope about it. But, Lord, I come to you, and I say, Lord, carry this pain. Lord, take this pain away from me. And the Lord will carry your pain, and he'll, he'll take the pain, the emotional pain, and he will be there for you, and he will give you rest for your soul. He says, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, and learn of me, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is like Romans 5, 8. Turn to Romans 5, 8. Therefore, let us keep Romans, sorry, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commendeth 
his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners christ died for us christ gave his all you could not have greater love than that the son of god who was god incarnate god came down made himself with no reputation and became nothing and humbled himself even to death of the cross where they spat at him and they mocked him and they whipped him and yet he did that for you he died for you and he loved you on that cross and he gave his life for you on that cross he bought you with a great price his blood he bought you my friend and now in your christian life you're a running and hiding from that pain that keeps coming after you that pain that dwells up inside you and there it crushes you there it pulls you down and you're running and running and running god wants to tell you right now he loves you god demonstrates his love to you that while you were yet sinners christ died for you he talks about nothing nothing will ever separate you from his love he's got you in his hands and he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you and he's there with you right now carrying your burdens and he loves you and he can do more abundantly than you could ever ask or think he can bring light into that dark place he can bring light into your family where there might be darkness he can bring light into your situation where it's, it's hopeless he can do it and the reason why you can't see it is because of this you have not yet seen that he can do more abundantly than you could ever ask or think it says being rooted and grounded in the love of christ it says the unsearchable riches of christ and the problem with you is you do not understand how great and loving your god is and it's time you took away your mind from yourself it's time you took your mind away from your pain and it's time you did the grand canyon reading of ephesians and stepped back and looked at the vast majestic love of god in your life that you are now saved you are now a child of god and you are now walking in the king's way and he is with you and you'll be blessed and you'll know his peace you'll know his joy you'll know his love you'll know his hope because he's with you he is the god of hope and you're all okay so smile sister smile brother you're on the way to glory and god has saved you and god loves you and god will bring hope into that that place of yours that you keep running away from oh what a great god you've got you don't have to frown today oh no you are with the living god you can be happy in jesus today whatever your pain whatever your problem god is with you right now and working all things together for good to them that love god and he's with you right now sister and he's with you right now brother so wipe away that tear put that pain in the hands of god and watch him renew it watch him give it life in a new vigorous way of joy watch him make you a new man and a new woman who has hope in his feet hope in her feet peace and joy in the holy ghost watch him make that pain into something beautiful watch him make you anew watch him make you a better person watch him make that situation that you have feared that cripples you watch him make a way for you and watch him pour out more abundantly than you could ever ask or think you're on the winning side and you're okay sister and you're okay brother are you encouraged i say are you encouraged i say you encouraged say amen i say it again say amen are you encouraged and wipe away your tears sister wipe away your tears brother are you encouraged praise his name yeah praise his name come on now you're on the winning side praise his name praise his name praise his name hallelujah king of kings and lord of lords we praise you we worship you and we adore you and then the final piece of this message if we turn to ephesians chapter 3 verse 4 Let's go back and we'll finish that. Ephesians 3. Chapter 3. Verse 4. This is the linchpin. This is the text that you can come back to time and time again in the meditation of this passage. 
whereby when you read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. We've been looking at the mystery of Christ, my friend. What is that mystery? I'll say it again. The mystery of Christ is that the Jews and the Gentiles are one in him. That is the mystery. God is building a people for his glory. Now, turn to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. Now we have Barack Obama and we have a president and he might be in the White House and he might be discussing about how the world is to be run. We might have prime ministers and leaders in parliament that say that discussing about how things might be run but i want you to know this that there's a greater drama going on in the world and it is the drama of god throughout the history and at this present time god is calling a people to himself the jews and the gentiles to become one this god is doing this right now he accomplished it on the cross and he is now bringing his people together in christ this is the great drama of the ages and it is unfolding right now when you have been swept in this drama and it is way above Obama, way above the White House, way above Parliament. This is the grand drama of the universe that God came down in Christ, saved a people and is united them in himself. And you've been swept up in this drama. And as you're in this drama, God will supply all your need. He will supply the need of the church to get the job done. He'll provide for the needs of the church to get the job done. Yeah? And he'll supply your need to get your job done. And that is the great blessing today. And in Ephesians 3.10, it says, to the, in, in, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. The principalities and powers are looking on and they're seeing this great drama unfold and they are shocked and amazed at what God is doing. They are so shocked and amazed, the scripture is saying that they're learning about God from what he's doing in his church. So when you're alone and you feel that you're not significant in this world, whether you're a church that thinks that you're not important, that you haven't got the resources, I want to tell you this. For this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. 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 I'm going to close in prayer. And I'm going to send a couple of invites to some of the people that I respect on YouTube. If they want to come in in a minute. <clears throat> and uh, so we're going to close in prayer. And then um, I'm just going to play a song. This is Mark Murchison. Living below 
In this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore. Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind. I love them and everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Tell me where could I go? Amen. Amen. I, I really enjoy um, that ministry. The ministry of Mark Murchison, a great ministry, and find it a great encouragement. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? 
Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we we can help you later? Comfort with the Lord of care. Precious Savior still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for safety? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms you take and shield thee. Thou will find the soul that's there. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Everything to God in prayer. Amen. I love that guy. <clears throat> okay, I sent a few invitations out and uh, just see if anybody comes in. If you want to come in, uh, let me know. Um, I put the chat on. If anyone wants to uh, type in, yeah. So I put group chat on. If anyone wants to type in and ask a question or or anything, okay. I'm just going to pray. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining, uh, listening to the message. Uh, if you want to use the message uh, to. For your church uh, you feel free to make a dvd and pass it on to your friends yeah okay oh, i've got cramp in my leg <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. I got cramp in my leg just for a second and 
And I thought someone was texting me on my phone. Sorry about that, folks. Let's come before the Lord and let's pray. Father God, uh, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for your love. And we thank you for your grace. And uh, we give you the prayers. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we thank you for this day. And we thank you for your love, Lord. And uh, we give you the prayers. We give you the glory today. And we just magnify your name today, Lord. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that you're a faithful God and that you will supply our every need. And so, Father, we just ask in your name, Lord, that you be with us today. We pray that you would guide us and lead us. And Father, I pray for every person that heard this message, Lord, that you would just refresh them and renew them. That, Father, you would strengthen them. And I pray, Father, that they would catch a vision of the love that you have for them. That they would see how great and, and wonderful and mighty and, and, and powerful you are. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless. I pray that you would encourage. And I pray, Lord, that you would be uh, in this, Lord, for your glory. Bless it in every way you want to bless it, Lord, for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I've sent out a few invites. But, um, I think uh, I think it's been a, a message uh, in season, and I think that uh, it will encourage you. Um, I've got half an hour to spare, so I think I'm going to start another Google Hangout. And uh, I think I'll call it uh, j Bowl's uh, Christmas Bash, and we'll just have a few minutes catching up, seeing how people are. So I'm going to close this um, Google Hangout, and uh, I'm going to reopen another one. Um, so, yeah, all right, all right. Take care, and uh, see you. Have a good Christmas. If I don't see you, uh, enjoy this message. And uh, see you on the next Google Hangout in a minute if you want to come on, okay? Take care and God bless.